Hello, I'm Richard Voves, the Bald Explorer, and I'm out on another walk. I've got my comedy hat on to keep myself warm. It's a cold January day. This is a sort of follow-on from my walk from the Jack and Jill windmills to Ditchling Beacon. But I wanted to come and just show you, really, uh, this is Ditchling Down that I'm on uh, in East Sussex. I think it's East Sussex. And in front of me, We've got this wonderful view going north. Sorry about the wind buffering the microphone. I don't know if it is, but it's but certainly buffering me. And I'm coming down this incredibly steep slope. On my left, you can see the wonderful undulating hills of the South Downs and the, uh, the, the northern slopes. And I am walking very precariously down uh, what looks like a footpath down the hill. I don't know how this is going to come out. I'm hoping that as I get down I'll drop out of the wind. That is the hope. But this path circumnavigates these uh, combs, I suppose they're called, these northern slopes that uh, were formed as the, uh, the chalk that uh, once covered all of Sussex in a great big dome, in a massive dome, uh, started to be washed away by the uh, elements. People often say it's the, uh, the Ice Age did it, but of course the ice, the ice um, shelf never came this far, never got down into Sussex, but there would have been much water, much cold um, uh, air and winds and all that which was doing its stuff. So I'm coming slowly down here and I just want to show you then by looking back up, I've got to climb up again, um, but you'll see these great big bowls. Here's a, a great big bowl, the other side of these hawthorn bushes as I come down here. This is a footpath and it's a way up, I guess, from Ditchling itself, which is just in front of me, a little, little um, village there. But look down here, this slope completely filled in now with these trees which again they look like some of them are hawthorns but some of them aren't some of them are something else I'm not quite sure what they are um, and it could be that some of these were excavated well, there's a there's a cow in that field right in the distance could be that some of these were excavated for the chalk chalk to make lime for houses as a cement, as a, um, a render really, uh, and, a, and a cement for binding the bricks together. And more cows dotted over there. Well, hope we don't encounter too many of them. I, I feel though that I'm coming down this path. I can't help feeling though, looking at the, uh, the mud, that this is a route that the cows actually climb themselves so I'm hoping this isn't a foolhardy mission of mine because um, I'm not going to be able to outrun a cow not sure where to go now but I just wanted to show you this really as a, a simple single um, video slightly concerned that the, the path that I thought I was on has actually disappeared. I'm just going to carry on down this hill. It means I've got to climb up again, but we get the, the rather lovely countryside, the views. There's another path over in the distance. I don't know how easy it's going to be able to get to that. And then I can climb back up again, but I do have to, oh, there's cows over that way. Right, I'm not too keen on walking through the cows. I don't even know if I can adjoin into that field because of the trees. It looks like there's a natural hedge here. Although the path actually does come down here. I hope they're not bulls. I'm guessing that the farmer thinks that very few people come into this field.
certainly good exercise clambering up and down all of this oh yeah this I know takes me to another gate but it seems to be a bit of a dead end so I'm going to have bought this side of the walk clamber it back up but there's another gate further along the South Downs way so I'm going to investigate that one all right back up we go I clambered up the hill oh that was hard work I can tell you and I've walked along this ridge along here behind me there's some sheep and there's cows and of course I could have just walked on this side I didn't realize uh, this is the Sussex border path now that goes back up there and down this way it's less steep thank God <laughs> um, at the beginning of the season it's good to get one's legs pounding and working get the uh, the energy people go to gyms don't they and look look at all this wonderful uh, gorse oh I had to blow my nose and here Sussex border path and I assume this is a uh, the border between East Sussex and West Sussex then otherwise what's the border between lots of gorse and lots of um, hawthorn on this way and it's a much more sedate pathway which is lovely there are actually some people coming up this way so they must be coming up I don't know where you would be coming up from because Ditchling is is that way and I was right over there but they must be where are they going I can't really see from here lots of sheep and these great coombs these great sort of valleys they are a, a pretty amazing just wanted to really show this side of the downs because often when you're in the down um, in the the landscape in the weald in the flat of Sussex you look back this lot is very often because it's on the north side it's very often silhouetted because the Sun is generally to the south of course the east heading round to the west and so you don't often see it and these coombs these valleys are just so beautiful and they've not changed and this whole landscape it's ancient landscape of course uh, hunter-gatherers no doubt Neolithic people setting up their camps Iron Age Bronze Age then the Iron Age of course and, and even during the Ro uh, Romano um, British stage people were farming here letting out their cattle clearing the landscape you can imagine this landscape that we see is all very open at the moment and clear of many trees but of course in its day and 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 if you were to not manage it at all it would soon turn to scrub it would too soon turn to be covered in in trees a lot of the hawthorn and so on and originally from reading Oliver Rack Rackham who was a leading authority on uh, on trees and ecology the uh, this part go back to uh, the Neolithics and the pre-Neolithic times all of this and, and all of Sussex and all of the southeast covered in lime in lime trees not lime the fruit obviously lime trees and what's fascinating about that is lime trees now are not really something that grow naturally they tend to be planted trees planted in avenues in towns and villages and, and even in cities they're very much a planted tree in the way that the London plain is these days but they were the uh, pretty much the most prolific tree back then uh, along with oak anyway I'm just gonna see what else we can see get another view if we can get a view west that would be nice so this way is east going east that way and I'm just gonna cut in to the west here looks like there's an actual pathway here which is interesting because there's a natural dike or route through look at that and I'm guessing that is a, a route up I might go down there and follow it up actually very very 
undulating and full of fun for people with bikes and things. So let's clamber down here in this natural gully. This wouldn't have been cut out or anything. And we'll come up here. You can see that beasts come up here. By beasts I mean cattle, of course. Probably sheep as well. Out of the wind, which is terrific for me. And just creep through some of these hawthorns crashing against my jacket. I hope it doesn't rip it to shreds. Oops. Duck under here. And weave our way back up. This is the beauty of the, of the downland. You know, most people do just stick to the top. If they get up the top, they look at the views. And then, whoops, I nearly lost my balance. There's all of this as well. These paths, these little natural grooves, probably inhabited by ancient man at one point. So very important ancient. You know, it's almost, actually, this is almost like a dug out. Actually, I'm just wondering, look at that. It's almost like a dug out. Um, castle mott that's um one wonders it's feeding my imagination that's for sure i'm going to climb up to the top and see if i can get a, a better view because this now doesn't look like so much a natural phenomenon as more man-made let's go up here clamber up this bit and suddenly what do we think This whole area, look, surrounded by this channel going around. Gonna have to look on old maps to see if there's anything there. We got the wind again, but I'm gonna have to end the video, I'm afraid. Let's just have a look down one more time into that gully. Yeah, right. Thank you so much for watching. Anyway, this was a quick impromptu video on the north side of Ditchling Down and the things that you can see. I do come and enjoy it. It's here for you, no matter what the weather. Take care, thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Become a patron, support what I do, and I can carry on making these videos for you. Until next time, take care and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>